Hello, today we are going to talk about routing and switching. This is CCNA 2 version 5 chapter 4. After completing this chapter you will be able to describe the primary functions and features of a router using CLI, configure basic settings on the router, verify the connectivity of the router in the network, and explain how a router is built and how it's configured. Routing. Networks allow people to communicate, collaborate, and interact in many ways. They allow us to access, access web pages, talk using IP phones, do video conferences, and even shop. Sometimes the source IP and the destination IP are on different networks. The router helps us to connect those networks and determine the best path between them. Let's talk about the characteristics of a network. It has a topology, a speed, a cost, a security, availability, scalability, and reliability. Components of a router. A router can be considered a computer because it has all the components a regular computer has, like a CPU, an operating system, and a memory storage. Another great characteristic of a router is that it always chooses the base path. Router supports three package forwarding mechanisms. Processing, process switching. Here, the package arrives and is forwarded to the control plane, where the CPU matches the destination address and determines the exit interface. Fast switching, where the CPU looks in the fast switching table. And Cisco Express Forwarding, when it builds a forwarding information base. The initial configuration of a router. It must be connected to a network along with other devices like laptop, tablets, network printers, phones, and other end-user devices. To enable network access, we need to assign an IP address, a subnet mask, and a default gateway. Also, we need to enable an IP, an IP on the host, check the status on the device's LED, have a console access with the with TerraTerm or or another similar similar software, and enable an IP on the switch. Some basic settings on a router are name the device, secure management access, and configure a banner. Configure an IPv4 address as we can see in the image and configure a loopback interface and we, as we can also see in the image. Verifying the connectivity. There are many ways that we can verify the connectivity of the router to the network. One of those, one of those ways is the command show IP interface brief, which, which displays a summary of all interfaces including the IPv4. Another command commonly used is show IP route, which shows the content of the IPv4 routing table stored in the RAM. Another command is the show running config. This is another way to verify the connectivity. This command shows up a lot more information besides the IP configuration. The commands that generate more than 24 lines of output are not shown by default. It means that they will generate those 24 lines of output and stop to let you decide how to visualize the rest of the output. Pressing enter will display the next output line but pressing the spacebar displays the whole next set of output lines. Because of this, it is useful to know that you can filter those outputs to improve the user experience. The filtering parameters can be section, include, exclude, and begin.
Command history. The function of the command history is simple. It lets you know the command line used in the past by other users or, or by you in the same session. Router switching function. A primary function of a router is to forward packets to their destination. This process is called switching. switching. Path determination. Routing decisions. A primary function of a router is to make the decision of which path to choose when sending a, path, a, a package. There are three determinations that must be followed. If the destination address is in, the, is in a remote network, if there is no route determined and, it, uh, uh, and or if it is directly connected to the network. This way the router makes sure to fulfill to the indispensable tasks, choosing the best path and balancing the load. Another important component is the <coughs> routing table. It stores the information of all the known routes, directly connected routes and remote routes. These routes can be learned in different ways, being directly connected to the specific devices, Statly learned routes, which are manually configured into routes that are defined on a specific path between the two devices and on a network, and dynamically learned routes, which are protocols used by routes to share information about the status of the network. This kind of learning is known as network discovery. Thank you.